Good afternoon. Welcome to this PolyU MBA webinar. My name is Y.H. Hong. I'm the MBA program director and the facilitator of this event. I believe most people in this city are feeling somewhat relaxed this week after months of stressful life. Early this week, our kids were allowed to resume face-to-face -face classes. The dying surface in dinner time was come back. Cinemas reopened their doors. Last night, Mong Kok was busy again as usual. News reporters said people were exciting in the first evening of easing social distance taken event. People can't wait. However, we still have hundreds of new cases every day at the moment. Mm -hmm. So now it's still too early to say the fifth wave of COVID-19 outbreak is over. In fact, a couple of government pandemic expert advisors already raised a warning that the next wave of COVID-19 pandemic is coming soon. Corporate leaders and managers should still be in good shape in running the business carefully. PolyU MBA program believes now is the time for us to review share and learn how the COVID-19 pan pandemic impacts our management practice in the last two years to help us prepare a better future. Our MBA program has more than 30 years experience to develop general managers in Hong Kong. We insist to equip students not only with theoretical concepts, but also with practical applications. Recently, in Times Higher Education Well University rankings, 2022 by subject. Our business economics ranks number one in Hong Kong and the 25th globally. With this strong background, we have the media sub and have the media support from aperformance.com. We organize this special executive webinar to inspire managers and professionals to become future leaders with an innovative and forward thinking mindset to face the challenges that's raised from the ever-changing business environment. This afternoon, we are honored to have two very outstanding HR professionals to share their insights and experience of their innovative HRM strategy during the pandemic era. They are Ms. Eliza Ng of Hong Kong Productivity Council and Ms. Kit Fan of Tang Guest. During the talk of our two speakers, if you have any questions, please put them down on the chat room. We will have a Q&A session after their talks. Please look that this event will be recorded. Please switch off your camera if necessary. Now, let me introduce our first speaker, Ms. Eliza Ng. Eliza is currently the Chief People and Culture Officer at Hong Kong Productivity Council. She holds a master's degree in human resources development and training with over 28 years all around HR experience as senior HR executive in US Fortune 500 listed company, investment banking, and Hong Kong listed IT company. Eliza has also served as a member of the Hong Kong Management Association's People Development Management Committee since 2011, a board of expander of HKMA Award for excellence in training and development since 2012. Executive Committee of the Chamber's Women Executive Cup of the Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce since 2014. Manpower Committee of HKC GCC since 2017. Examination Moderator Honorary for the Certification and Diploma Programs in HR Management Courses of the Hong Kong Baptist University since 2018. In appreciation of her outstanding vision and leadership, she obtained the most popular business leaders of the month from Asia CEO community in September 2020. And best of the best HR star of the year 2020, grounded by one of the Hong Kong media in October 2020. Missing topics today is innovative human resources management strategy in the pandemic era. Please join me in welcoming our first speaker, Ms. Eliza Ng. Thank you, Professor Ho. Let me share my PowerPoint first. Hello, everyone. 
I'm glad to be here today to share about our innovative HR initiative and practice at the Hong Kong Peace Productivity Council, especially during the pandemic period. Before going to um, uh, the details of my sharing, I would like to quickly introduce our Hong Kong Productivity Councils to all of you. Hong Kong PC is a multidisciplinary organization to promote productivity excellence through integrated advanced technologies and innovative service offerings to offer Hong Kong enterprise. We have to promote productivity excellence through world-class advanced technologies and innovative service. We collaborate with local enterprise across the industry and the world we own research and development institutes to deliver values with cutting edge solutions. Early this year, we have rolled out a series of measures to support the SMEs and the public to navigate through the uncertainties during the pandemic. We shall definitely continue to create values of enterprise, promoting the development of Hong Kong into an international innovation and technology hubs. Uh, but, okay, here's our agendas today. Um, we have, uh, 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 at Hong Kong PC, we continue to uphold our employees' health, well-being, and development. I would like to share about how we protect our employees' health, stay connected with them, especially when we are work from home. Keep them happy and healthy, and lastly, support their learning and development needs. When you come to our office, we will be warmly welcomed by one of our Wobanta ambassadors named Fei Mui with lots of funny greetings. She will say, hey, long time no see. I miss you so much. At the same time, you can also see the other two ambassadors, Dai Ba, Siu Ba, and they are working very hard to space to ensure that our working environment is kept thoroughly Jam free. They actually form part of our crew to fight against the pandemic. As the protection of employees' health, we are implementing four key precautionary measures. Firstly, all employees and visitors are required to perform RAT with negative results before they are allowed uh, to enter our building. We have deployed self-driving robots to sanitize the office and public area of our building as part of our measure to protect against the spread of the virus. These are being used round the clock. We also encourage our employees to receive the vaccinations as early as possible. They are entitled to one day leave for each vaccination does received so that they can have sufficient time to recover after getting vaccinated. They can also take half day to accompany their family members to take each vaccination just too. Upon resuming work in office last week, we also distribute the safety care pack to all employees. It contains RAT kits, surgical masks, etc. That's how we show our employees we care about their health and well-being. Our vaccination rate has kept ahead of Hong Kong's vaccination rate. After the Easter, our vaccination rate for competing two deaths reached 100% and 57% for the first dose already. They have proved the effectiveness of our measure. In addition, there are around 120 family members who also benefit from our family vaccine leave. We received very positive comments from the employee about this arrangement as they can be very free when their family members took the jets. When we work from home, maintaining a relationship with a remote team is challenging. By utilizing the technology, we conduct the employee communications meeting to capture the voice of employee. We also organize regular best practice sharing to let our employee keep abuse of our business and market intelligence. We also use our in 
external social network enabling open and dynamic communications across the different divisions. It helps to build the transparency, food keeping staff informed and encouraging this, this sharing of the ideas across the entire organization. Ch uh, co colleagues can keep in touch through these informal tools and build stronger and more personal relationships for collaborations and boosting the productivity. This is unquestionable that maintaining employee productivity remotely is very challenging. During January and February this year, most of us will work from home and our productivity might be adversely affected. However, we notice two interesting findings. Our employee actively in terms of outlook and team's usage were actively higher than the average of the past 12 months. Our employees' activities were even higher than the fourth wave of COVID-19 outbreak. Our employees were even more productive and engaged at work than a year ago. We are now considering more flexible working arrangements to attract the talent in future. A healthy and happy workforce not only leads to better quality of life, it also leads to reduce the work stress, optimizing the performance and engaged workforce and increased work productivity. We are dedicated to provide a pleasant and robust workplace to our employees through our wellness strategies in different aspects. In other words, we build a healthier and happier workforce keep our employee engaged and promote a positive culture. Okay, let me show you a short video about our wellness strategies. Okay, so how you feel? We have a large group of young generations working in Hong Kong Productivity Council. Half of our employees are aged 55 or below. And so, we boost staff morale was e sports. Our employees enjoy games competitions with a 180 degrees screen to the extent that they form their own cheering teams. Very exciting moment during the competitions can indeed enhance the team spirit and cross team collaborations. We are now also planning to place more games, consoles, and board games in our staff common room to sustain a fun, enjoyable culture. In last November, we organized Hong Kong Productivity Council's Appreciation Week to appreciate our employees who work extremely hard throughout the challenging year. A series of activities like massage, candy corner, photo booth, appreciation, etc., were organized to cheer up our employees. Our employees are enthusiastic and delighted to engage in Hong Kong PC's work-life balance lifestyle. And we are glad to have our management participations in st our staff activities to have fun together. We will continue to strengthen bonding between the management and employees by involving more management in our activities. Lots of Hong Kong citizens felt isolated and burned out during the, the, the fifth wave of COVID-19. In order to enhance the positive work from home experience and promote employee um, physical and mental health, we organized Wellness Month. Wellness March in March uh, uh, 2022, with different programs and positive thinking weapons throughout the month. Our engagement strategy is very successful as our employees are active and passionate to engage in our life. All staff activities were organized by our staff and more employees even volunteered to become our teacher, our facilitators to share and contribute their expertise with us. You can see that, you know, the, the, this is our, our, our staff, one of our staff, um, who sharing the yogurts to, to the staff. And we want to 
um, build this culture and let our staff feeling that um, this is very happy workforce in the, our organizations. Besides, we have integrated the blended learning by establishing the e-learning platform. Our employee can choose any topics to upskilling and make self-learning anytime, anywhere. We have also organized various future skills workshops to deepen our employees to enhance their ABCD skills. I think a lot of people know what is the ABCD is, right? A, a stands for AI, blockchain, cloud computing, big data, and other new technologies. For that, our various internal upskilling and reskilling training series, we can develop a pool of homegrown talent having the potential to success any key role or take on new roles as they grow and identify any key competency that needs to be developed to ensure that they are ready for the next step. In 2021, we organized more than 70 training activities with over 5,200 participants and 9,000 300 training hours to all our employees. We provide lots of the opportunities for the youth in Hong Kong. Our young talent garnered um, Hong Kong IE Paper Award, recognizing the R&D capabilities of Hong Kong Productivity Council and acknowledging our efforts in nurturing young engineers. Our training development programs have been also endorsed by two international accreditations for talent development, including the recognized employer partner accreditations from CPA Australia and the approved employer accreditations professional development from the UK Associations of Chartered Certified Accountants. These accreditations approve that Hong Kong PC internal training and talent development program for nurturing a new generation of inno talent are of international standard. Hong Kong PC will continue to invest in employee development and provide a high standard programs for our staff to regularly update and strengthen their professional knowledge. All right, I think lots of the organizations facing high attrition recently. In order to win the best talents, retain them and keep, have them retain competitive, competitive, we need to go beyond automating tra traditional um, HR approach. Because these approach don't answer the pleasant dates uh, talent management challenge and don't meet the expectations of the pleasant dates tax savvy workforce. With well-chosen digital solutions, we can transform and enhance everyday HR activities in various aspects, such as the solutions for hiring reduce the times and costs on hiring and increase its effectiveness. IT-driven onboarding support helps unlock the potential. E-learning enable employee to develop the professional skills and knowledge. Interactive platforms and live in office work and makes our people more motivated and productivity. HR operations need to be more agile than ever to keep up with today's workforce. As a seasonal HR professional nowadays, we should explore and implement new ways of working with specialized solutions that revolutionize HR management and employee experience at every stage of the employee life cycle. Okay, here's my ending of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for Eliza's sharing. It's unbelievable Hong Kong PC has so many activities and development programs. Maybe we should consider to join this organization. Welcome. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let me introduce our second speaker, Ms. Kit Fan. Ms. Fan has had over 35 years working experience in human resource management for Asia, covering various industries, including 
energy, building materials, engineering, manufacturing, technology financing, and hospitality. She is currently the head of corporate HR at the Hong Kong and China Gas Company Limited, that is a Tang Gas, since mid-2012. In her role, Ms. Fan leads the overall HR function for the group covering all business and locations. Ms. Fan worked in several multinational Fortune 500 companies before joining Tang Gas. She was the senior vice president HR for Asia of the Lavrage Group the world leader in cement manufacturing, overseeing 14 countries, and previously the Vice President Kama, HR, Asia Pacific region for emission networks power and climate technologies covering the same number of countries. Other previous appointments included AT&T Capital Corporations and the Hong Kong and Shanghai Hotels Limited. Ms. Fan holds a Master of Business Administration degree from University of Leicester and the Bachelor degree in Social Science from Middlesex University, London. She is a member of the Hong Kong Institute of HR Management. Ms. Fan engaged herself activity in human resources development in Hong Kong. She is a member of the Human Resources Committee of the Hansen University of Hong Kong the People Development Management Committee of the Hong Kong Management Association, the Manpower Committee of the Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce. She is also the honorary advisor to the Employer Retaining Boss Manpower Developer Awards Scheme. Mm -hmm. Ms. Fan currently serves on the board of directors of the Chinese University of Hong Kong Medical Center and chairs the Complaints Appeal Committee. She is also a member of the Human Resources Committees. Ms. Fan's topic today is Tanke's innovative HRM strategy in the pandemic era. Please join me in welcoming our second speaker, Ms. Kit Fan. Thanks a lot, uh, Professor Hong. Um, okay, let me share the screen, my presentation. Hold on a second. Thanks a lot for inviting me to um, share the Tangas experience in the human resources strategies during the pandemic time. Um, let me start with a few slides about Tangas. I think the, many of you know the Hong Kong and, Shang, Hong Kong and China gas, which is Tangas, Mui Hei Gong Si. Okay, uh, Tangas has actually a very long history in Hong Kong. It was born in um, uh, 1862. This year, we are 160 years old. Um, the, the very beginning of town gas actually started during the British colonies time, where the British, they brought the gas technology from England to Hong Kong with the purpose of building gas lamps in central as well as Shawan area. Um, because uh, as some of you may know, the, um, the, there was no electric lamps that ties in, in Hong Kong. So people carrying, you know, if they go out, they, 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 they walk in the street in the evening, they have to carry a lantern. But of course, that it was not very convenient. So the, the town gas built 500 gas lamps. Uh, which cover 24 kilometers of gas pipes in the Shenwan and central area. Throughout the years today, we have over 500 joint ventures in mainly in China, plus one major company, our corporate company in Hong Kong. Um, the total gas pipelines, uh, as you can see on the slides, is you know 140,000 kilometers uh, of gas pipe network in China. Hong Kong. So this year we're reaching 160 years anniversary. If we move on to the next slide, you can see the key milestones of town gas starting from the beginning till today. Uh, as mentioned, we start as a street lighting company. And then around the uh, 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 19th century that we move into the gas um, gas supply, including supplying gas for people to cook or to take hot water for shower. And 1994, we start our first step 
to move in new uh, mainland China. Uh, we begin by setting up very, very small joint ventures in the southern part of China, which is Punyu, Sundup, only two, uh, by providing the kind of similar gas supply uh, business in mainland. And, uh, and then move to 2000. Um, apart from providing city gas, we also start our midstream business, including gas storage and also pipe work, uh, connecting this gas storage station um, to the gas points. Uh, then moving to 2004, we embark our telecommunication business, uh, as well as the get water business in 2005. You may wonder how come, you know, Tangas is a gas company and start doing kind of, you know, non-gas business like telecom or water is purely because we have underground pipe work, pipe duct. So for example, if we have to build the telecom um, cable uh, network or the water pipe networks. We don't have to open new ditches. So we use the same gas pipe ditches to do the, to lay the pipes for the water as well as the telecom. Also, the government authorities departments that we deal with, mainly in China, belong to the same department. So, you know, by killing three birds by one stone, so we start this two side business. 2008, we also embark new energy business. What is new energy? That is the environmental green energy. We use the um, the feedstock like the, the waste oil, uh, the agricultural waste, or those people they, you know, dump as the pollutants, um, as the feedstock to using our own technology to turn into environmental friendly gasoline or other kinds of energy. Um, this sector has a very good future. Uh, also, you know, coincide with the carbon reduction uh, mission of the country as well as the other uh, countries in the world. Starting from 2010, we start our manufacturing business, uh, mainly manufacture gas pipes and gas meters. Uh, actually, the, the, the reason for us to start this business is not really for profit, but for safety. Because mainly, for example, in mainland China, we never can be 100% sure the materials that our suppliers use in making the gas pipes are the um, up to the, the top quality materials. So, you know, for safety purpose, we start our manufacturing plants uh, in, mainly, in mainland China to produce our gas pipes and meters. 216, we start thinking of that time we called it sub, uh, sustainability. Today, the fashion term is called ESG. If we have to sustain our business, what are the things that we have to do better, pay attention, or keep on innovating in order to keep, keep our business? Actually, we started uh, in 2016. Um, then, of course, 2020, uh, we start our smart energy, mainly is talking about the solar energy um, in China. This solar energy business, we have a big plan um, in China that uh, we are uh, planning to build 200 uh, carbon zero um, scientific parks with cover with smart energy in China. So very exciting milestones for town gas. Move on to the next page. Uh, just a, a map showing our coverage. Uh, you can see that uh, our business covers 28 uh, provincial regions, um, as I said, over 500 um, joint ventures, um, except in Tibet, uh, in Xinjiang, uh, that we have no business. I would say that the majority part of China, we have business set up. Um, I'm not going to go into details about this. Um, you, can, you can see. Our total workforce are mainly in China, um, um, over 50,000. Whereas uh, Hong Kong, we, have, it, we include all kinds of business. Um, we are reaching almost 3,000. 3, 
Okay, so the 2,300 is about gas business, but if we include all business, we are reaching 3,000 employees in Hong Kong. Okay, let's talk about pandemic. Um, in the past two and a half years, I'm sure, you know, the COVID-19 uh, on and off, um, not only in Hong Kong, but in, in the whole world, uh, has brought a lot of um, challenges to everyone. For organization-wise, uh, you can see the, the stress that we are facing here. Um, stress in doing business, stress in uh, managing our people, uh, even in motivating ourselves. So a lot of stress level, come and go, okay? And no doubt um, uh, that caused a lot of service interruption to us. But town gas, we are a gas company. We are a public utility company. There are some part of us we cannot stop even at the peak of the pandemic. For example, our gas production plant. If we have any hiccups in the production plant, then Hong Kong, the gas supply will be, you know, seriously affected. Um, that we cannot stop. And also, you know, if there's any accident or repair emergency, um, gas pipe repair, we cannot stop as well. Otherwise, it will cause, you know, a lot of um, uh, accidents in, 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 in Hong Kong or in China. And on the other hand, we have to think of our people's safety because um, COVID-19, you know, it, it particularly the Omicron time, you know, it spreads so fast. And, uh, you know, the, our, our people, some of them, you know, have to continue uh, their service every day. Um, they run into risk by contacting people, by going into buildings, which has outbreaks. Um, so we care about our, our people's safety. And no doubt, employee morales are seriously affected. Um, so how are we going to motivate our people to continue to do that work? And the manpower shortage is another headache we face, particularly, as I said, in the Omicron, the fifth wave, because um, our company, the, during the Omicron the time, we have about 23% of our people get positive. Well, luckily not at the same time, but accumulative. So you can imagine that the manpower shortage, the serious workload, um, the issues that we, have, we were facing, okay? Business performance, of course, affected. Um, restaurants closed, Ocean Park, um, Disneyland closed. They are the major customers of town gas. Um, and also, you know, we have to use technology to compensate part of their manual work. So how are we do going to do it quick uh, and uh, apply it? So those are the big challenges to us. And no doubt, contingency management are the continuous challenges that we have been facing during the pandemic time. So the first thing is employee safety first. There is non-negotiable, no matter what we do. The safety of our people always, always come to first. By saying this, as I said, there's something that we cannot stop. Their safety is also the number one priority for Hong Kong and for China. So what we do, okay, um, there are some positions that can afford, we can, we can let them to work from home, um, but some cannot. Uh, so those positions that uh, we can uh, let people work from home or they can actually at home, they can produce the same kind of uh, work outputs, then uh, we split them into different teams. Uh, last year, during the Delta time, we probably split AT, A, B team, but Omicron time, I would say that we actually split into four teams, A, B, C, D. So, so each team member, they probably work like once a week, okay? Um, or some team, they basically 100% work from home, depends on the departments. Um, and also we have uh, flexi working hours, even those people who come to work, they have flexi working hours. We have four, four different time slots 
that uh, people can choose, um, you know, as long as they can still provide their work result, um, they can choose whatever time slots that are suitable uh, to come to work, as well as the lunch time, they can also have flexi lunch time to go out. Um, what is free hotel quarantine? Um, for uh, last year, there's, if the if our employees, they have family members or there's their children return from overseas education to come to Hong Kong for a holiday or for a break, you know, then the, the some, some countries like, for example, UK at that time has a very, very high outbreak. If our essential staff, they don't want to stay at home with their family members in order to um, affect their work, we can rent the hotel, provide them hotel accommodation with food, all paid by the company during the time that their kids' uh, quarantine period is over. And uh, also uh, last year, when there's any building in Hong Kong with two outbreaks, um, then of course uh, we asked the, 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 our employees to stay at home um, uh, or you know, uh, go to another uh, home quarantine that with subsidies. And this slide, um, which shows the kind of, I would say the basic things that uh, many other organizations, they are also doing, uh, like body temperature check, um, social distancing and, and disinfection. Uh, the, the, we also distribute the nano dis, uh, disinfection spray to our people so that they can use at home. So people get two bottles. Uh, this, uh, can, the, the effective period can last for, uh, after every spray can last for several weeks, they can bring the home to protect the home, okay? Um, I'm not going on the protective gear, but I want to mention a bit more on the lunch delivery. Um, during the peak time, we ask our restaurants and cooking center to cook to lunch um, packs and deliver to our offices and also our production plant. And um, so they don't have to go out to get the lunch. Okay, they have a menu that they, they, they can choose from. Um, so to avoid the contact with the other outside, so we provide this lunch delivery services to our people. The second thing is, apart from providing them the materials, we also show our care. Um, you can see at the right, at the left-hand corner, uh, if the any, and employees, they got positive, they have to stay at home. We deliver, we asked the um, delivering company to deliver a pack, of, we call it anti-COVID packs, which contain Chinese medicine, Western medicine, the rapid kits, uh, test kits, and the, um, uh, uh, the pro very pro uh, strong protective um, KN95 uh, protective uh, mask because uh, Especially during the Omicron time, uh, people who got positive, they cannot go to hospitals because of the not enough facilities. So they are forced, kind of forced to stay at home. So we hope that by at least providing something that they can help, we can help them to at least ease off their uh, discomfort as well as a more um, protective mask that they can, you know, protect th their family um, by getting uh, the, the COVID, okay? And also on the right-hand side, um, you can see that we provide health checkup, free, free health checkup paid by the company. Uh, if people, they have concern whether they should take vaccination or not, um, we provide this free medical checkup, whether through our in-house doctor or outside doctor, but paid by the company. And similar to uh, uh, Hong Kong Productivity Council, we also provide education, encouraging people to take the vaccination. Say, you know, if they take the vaccination that day, even though they, move the, they, they make the booking at 9 a.m. in the morning, uh, after they take the vaccination, they need they don't need to come back to work, and plus they have one extra holiday for every vaccination. Um, manage, senior management, we also visit our site 
uh, we give them some kind of, you know, uh, uh, sort of like a bottle drink, uh, some protective gear, just to show our face, to give them encouragement, to show our care to them. And uh, throughout the years, we also sometimes have fruits day. We give them, uh, distribute fruits to everybody or everybody get a knapsack, tongue gas nap, uh, knapsack, which contain disinfectant spray or some vitamins. Okay, um, we also provide a hotline, which is paid by the company as well. If anyone, they feel a little bit depressed or they, they are under the pressure or they stay at home, they have to face all these um, negative impacts of the COVID. They want to talk to somebody. They are free to call this hotline, which professional counseling, we contract out to the counseling um, service, then they can talk to this professional people. Uh, company does not need to know. Okay, so they can confidentially share or they, their, their, their stress with these uh, professional counselors. Okay, the third thing is we have, how do we engage our people? Similar to what Eliza shared, uh, the first thing we look after is the physical health, no doubt. Okay, um, we organize uh, regularly our physical health uh, event, including some of the things that you uh, you see on the screen, um, like the home fitness uh, program. Um, this home uh, fitness program sometimes we organize it during the weekend, that people they can uh, do the fitness. Uh, 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 with their families together. And also we keep the recording in our uh, internet platform that people, if they have no time to, um, to join online, they are always welcome to, uh, to join after, uh, afterwards by the, watching the video. Okay, uh, same token, we provide online cooking class because to stay at home, you know, work at home, you always have to, to prepare your own food because of the, the COVID time. So we um, teach online the cooking class. And even so, we organize the food packs, the uncooked food pack to deliver to people's home if they join the program that they can, uh, they don't need to go to the market to fetch those food. So what is virtual running competition? Um, we provide a running device to uh, whoever participate in this program. The duration is two months time. Okay, they, we have an um, application that people can upload um, their photos, their videos, uh, as well as uh, and anyone who run the routes that they, through the app, they, everybody can see that, oh, this person actually running in Timun or in Titan Vesuva. You know, so and also they can upload their pictures to see the good, uh, the beautiful sceneries. Okay, so on the right hand side is the weight management campaign this year. Uh, it's still ongoing. Um, what is the weight management? Because uh, people sometimes you hear people say that oh, I was stuck at home. You know, I actually my weight is going terribly, um, uh, uh, increase a lot. So um, we have the weight management campaign. Why is 160 days? Because this year is 160 anniversary of Tangas. And also, you know, weight management, we cannot do it overnight. Um, and we have to throw this 160 uh, days program. Um, throughout the period, we also um, uh, organized the, you know, the, the eating tips. Um, or uh, how to eat healthy, um, uh, how to exercise. So we wait at the beginning and then uh, uh, encourage them to do different kind of exercise through the program. And then 160 days later, then let's see, you know, who will won, who will uh, win the, the, the championship. Okay, mental health. I think this is a very important thing apart from physical health because as you can read the news that the COVID time, this two and a half years, many people get depressed uh, they, or they feel the anxiety. So we provide different workshops to help people um, understand or help people how to manage their work from home anxiety or they have to deal with the children who are also stuck at home. 
uh, or some of them lost their loved ones because of the COVID. So the, 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 the management of the, uh, the mental health is very important. And also we organized the virtual uh, Chinese doctor medicine, uh, um, how to, you know, virtual uh, consultation. Uh, and then do some online interest um, workshops they can do with their family members. And these are the another two that um, we have the sub like a calligraphy design competition. Uh, this you can see the little word on the on the on the corner, which is in Chinese is lai. It is a uh, courtesy or politeness, which is the part of the um, Tangas culture. is one of the key pillar of uh, Tangas uh, surface pledge. Um, so this is competition and online the outstanding employees award. People can vote online lifetime to the, the participants that they, they like or they support. Okay, new normal. Um, during the COVID time, we create some positions. Actually, they don't need to come back to office. They're full-time home-based positions. Of course, we start by, you know, uh, a, a one month training. And then after that, uh, we provide them uh, the, the devices, including the computer desktop, the, the, uh, the machines, they can actually work from home. Um, we have uh, several positions, over 10 positions, like the customer hotline uh, positions full time, they home based. Um, and also flexi hours are already mentioned. Um, I'm not going to go through details anymore. And uh, also online interviews. Uh, why you said that it is a new normal? Because in the past, um, we always truly believe that interviews, must, you must see the real person. But do, after the COVID uh, happened, we actually conduct most of our interviews online until the day that we sign contract with them, okay? E-learning, virtual learnings, um, uh, we have a lot of learnings that we have to continue to provide because our technicians, they cannot stop. Um, so what we do is that we um, do the virtual learnings as well as the e-learnings that they can also uh, uh, study during their, their, their own time through the network platform. As you can see the, you know, the, the virtual learning that they have to wear this glass, um, we plan a roster. They don't have human contacts, whereas they go into the room and then do this virtual learning themselves. Okay, go digital. I think this is, um, or Eliza also share. Uh, I'm not going to, to, to go through every single one. Uh, but video conferencing, uh, we were happy that we have two years um, town gas management uh, meeting, which connect 25 regions in, in China uh, successfully. And uh, even we present the award is the virtual uh, presentation. As you can see me there presenting the award to uh, 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 some employees. So this is kind of, you know, through this new, new fun and uh, elements. Okay, um, what is warranty online? Can I guess um, we always do regular uh, warranty work um, uh, together, partnership with uh, some NGOs, okay? So because of the COVID, we cannot really visit the, um, the, the, the single parent families, for example, the kids, um, physically. So what we do is we, we keep on sending uh, the subsidies, they, sometimes the, the, the regular food packs, uh, sometimes the, you know, the festival uh, like mooncake and things, but we cannot contact them, we cannot really have the physical contact. So we do the video volunteer online with them um, constantly to make sure that we bring the happiness to them. And also we invite some um, movie, uh, movie stars to do performance online so they can just log on the computer and they can watch it and celebrate with us. Okay, I talk about the pandemic has a lot of, create a lot of challenges and headaches to us. But on the other hand, I think pandemic also brings a lot, many 
opportunities to organizations. Um, drive innovations, no doubt. Without the pandemic, I would say that some innovations would not be so fast or would not be driven in such a strong force. Um, team spirit, uh, I guess uh, throughout these two and a half years, uh, which make us you know, more cooperative, cooperative, more working as a team, because if some people get ill or some people get quarantined, we have to help each other. Otherwise, our service cannot be delivered. Our service have to maintain, we have to work as a team. Employee well-being. Um, I think this is very good thing to make, particularly the management, we understand more the importance of employee well-being. Um, process improvement, no doubt. Uh, we have to speed up the uh, process improvement. Um, so, something, you know, in the past probably take, took 10 steps to finish. Now, probably six steps with the support of the digitalization. Okay. Um, new work modes, no doubt. Uh, I think there are more and more positions that we are thinking of. Uh, working from home or hybrid, you know, half working from home, half work in office, or even in some new design of the office or the renovation, um, we put a team together that we probably may not have the fixed seat. We have some co rotating seats. Um, if they have to come back to, to have meetings, then, you know, they sit on those seats or people have to travel. So there's no need for them to occupy fixed office or seats, okay? And less potential workforce. If we have more flexibility, um, say for example, we're working in hybrid mode, I'm sure we can, we can um, discover or open more new workforce, potential workforce pools that in the past we may not think of, okay? I think this comes to the end of my presentation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Kish. Tang guess this 160 years company is definitely a great company for work. And I like the last slide. Whenever there's a risk, there has an opportunity. Very positive. Well, thank you our speakers for sharing their innovative HRM strategies. Their strategy are full of forward thinking mindset and the roles of employees have to be redefined and they are being encouraged to take responsibility and advocate for themselves and others. I do believe this strategy not only can be adopted in this tough situation to motivate employees, but also can be implemented in the next new normal. Now is our Q&A session. Uh, please raise your question in the chat room. Well, there are already a couple of questions uploaded. Let us answer some of them. So our company also tried to organize online campaigns, but our staff are a lot excited about the events and the participation rate is low. How you improve the employee engagement against virtual activities? So who want to go first? Okay, maybe I, I, I share a bit um, uh, my, my, uh, my feeling on that. So actually, um, how to uh, uh, enhance the employee join the different kinds of the uh, event or initiative that you organize. I mean, first of all, you must define what kinds of the items or hot topics that your staff are interested in it. Take example, if you can ask your, 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 your management to, to, to join the Pilates program, and turn on the screen, turn on the, the camera. I think definitely a lot of the staff will join it. So you must create the um, atmosphere that is fun and joyful instead of just um, one-way communication. I think this is important. And secondly, um, um, as I mentioned, you can find out some of the hot topics. It's, uh, just like nowadays, uh, quite a lot of the people's uh, interest in the metaverse what is the metaverse is, and whether you know the company can have more innovative um, uh, initiative that can uh, use the metaverse 
to come up with one of the um, uh, programs in your organization that you can think of it so that to route the interest of the of the staff to join. Very good. Kids, do we want to have sure. some input? Yes, I guess um, anything to start with, you need some incentive or some attractiveness to um, attract people to join. Uh, apart from the top topics, interesting topics that Eliza mentioned about, I think, you know, depends on the kind of campaigns. As I mentioned, you know, the weight management uh, campaign, our virtual running campaign, uh, we have some real presence to give to the um, participants to start with. For example, the weight management program, everyone who join, no matter you win or you do not, you already get this wireless jumping rope. So even they themselves, they don't need to use it. They want to get it for the kids, right? Um, and then, of course, in the end, you know, you can join the competition. If you win the top 10, you get more uh, other things, right? And uh, the other thing is, you know, the campaign depends on when you organized it. For example, uh, some fitness campaign um, so, or some workshop campaign, you know, you don't, you probably do organize it during the time that, you in the people that can invite their family members. For example, the kids always stuck at home um, without the, the, the you know, going to school. Uh, they already get quite bored. You know, are we always looking at the computer to attend classes? So even the parents themselves, they want to think of something fun, you know, to entertain the kids. So sometimes we organize these um, programs during the uh, this weekend time. Um, so the, the, the parent, they, they can do together, they create some fun and some even a little bit presents for the kids. So this form an other kind of encouragement for people to join. And then some campaigns, of course, we have discount coupon. They can shop at the town guest uh, shopping platform with more marks, you know, they can get a bigger discount. So you create a little bit of attractiveness for people to get used to it. And then gradually, you know, they, they kind of accept this kind of new mode. Thank you, thank you, Keith. Thank you, Eliza. It seems the answer uh, reflects this. The HR <laughs> has also included some marketing elements. Yes. You really no have to some gimmicks to attract yes. your employees, yes. Yes. to yes. attend your uh, events or activities, you don't just sit and wait people to come. Sure. Okay, you have to do something. Yeah, to so let people, they have a good motivation. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. And then we move to the next question. Uh, there's an audience said, thank you for the wonderful experience and program sharings. Have you done any evaluation of the programs? Let me move. Uh, have you done any evaluation of programs? What are the most successful and favorite ones? So, Keith, this time you want to go Okay. Um, we haven't actually done this sort of like a formal survey uh, for the, all the programs we conducted during the COVID time. Uh, we did some for the training, the virtual and e-training. Um, the, the at the beginning, people, you know, complain. Oh, the network is no good. I could not really um, listen uh, clearly. Particularly those uh, participants in mainland China, because we normally conduct the training uh, is covering Hong Kong as well as the inland, the uh, the mainland. So um, at the beginning, the, the they were they they didn't really like it. Um, I think with the improvement of our IT system, the network, uh, and also we put the word, the e-training, uh, the recording on our e-platform that people, you know, they don't have to really join the, uh, do at the same time. Uh, they can join afterwards when the network is not so busy or when, you know, the boss is not calling them, you know, for other things so they can concentrate more. Um, I think that that is more welcoming. 
and uh, plus we add other elements um, instead of just to you know the reading materials which quite boring in a sense uh, we also um, try to use the short video uh, just like a YouTube you know in in Tanga's YouTube um, because I, I think nowadays apart from the reading materials people would kind of absorb the knowledge through the watching the, the, the videos and discussions. And we also create some chat work for them afterwards, after they, they read the thing. So, so the, the evaluation is getting better and better. Yeah. But as for other fun activities, we did not really conduct the formal evaluation as such. Yeah. We also, you know, um, have the survey for um, for uh, every initiative, no matter for the uh, wellness program or e-learning program. And uh, we just ask very simple questions, a few questions, very direct, whether they like it or not like. And I think the most important thing is, what is the, their expectations for the next initiative? So that we can come up with some of the uh, interesting um, uh, programs that they want to join. And, and, and also, I also agree with uh, Pete that sometimes you also need to have some motivations for the staff to participate, just like the coupons or, you know, if they answer the questions correctly, they will have the lucky draw, so on and so forth. Just to encourage them to jump. And, and also, you know, um, during the work from home of the time, quite a lot of the kids also join the program together, just for the yoga, they just... Um, um, you know, doing the exercise together. That's a lot of the fun. And also, you know, uh, the staff can release their stairs and then, you know, the kids sometimes will, uh, uh, you know, ignore them or, you know, to, to um, um, uh, you know, um, to, to let them to work together or play together. That's, I think, is um, one of the considerations that you can arrange different kinds of the initiative that can have the families to play together. And also, I would like to add another thing. Even though there's no formal evaluation as such for some of the activities, you actually can tell by the participation rate. If there are more and more people join, then that means this kind of uh, new mode um, are more and more acceptable to people. If, uh, you know, the, the, the rate drops, then it's a very hard fact that they don't like it. Yeah, so uh, give you some uh, figures. Our uh, virtual running uh, program last year, we have over 200 people join. Whereas the weight management, we have more than that um, who joined the program. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I agree with that. Definitely, if you have lots of employees, they're willing to participate in your events. Definitely, this is a, a good event. And basically, what I learned from uh, our speaker is that other than ask our employees to work hard, you have to make them have fun, okay? And then they, you have to take care of their family as well when they're working from home. Yeah. Exactly. So. Because if the, our employee is not happy, then they cannot have a good result. And the, 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 the business result will be no good. We have more complaints. Definitely the management is not happy. So that, the most important thing is to keep our people um, is uh, safe as well as happy. Good. Okay. Now we have another question. Is e-learning virtual training is quite common today. Some learning sessions are arranged after work. However, the employees are required to work over work over time that day. How to avoid its impact on work? Well, yeah. If it's the e-learning or virtual learning, definitely there's some, um, I think quite a lot of the common tools um, uh, nowadays. So it should be set up, you know, the staff can learn anywhere, anytime. And why need to do it, you know, over, over, after the office hour? I think, you know, can, can create, you know, flexibilities for the staff to learn. And we also um, trying to um, educate the management, hey, to find out maybe a, um, a Friday afternoon to avoid any meeting so they can let the staff to have more um, flexible arrangement for their, for their work or, you know, use that time to learn more. Use the e-learning platform. Uh, good. 
Yeah, I agree. I think the, um, you know, if we talk about employee well-being, um, we look at work-life balance. We try to not to take away their after-work hours, so they can have their own time with their family or do their own things. Even sometimes reluctantly, or we cannot organize it on other time. We try to do it during lunch hours. Lunch hours, we provide them lunch. In a sense, lunch packs, you know, because of COVID time, uh, they can just take their lunch packs to their workstation or their seat, and then they do the virtual uh, training. Um, the, so, and also they can, they can, you know, do, uh, do the training, not only in the computer, they can do it in the phone. And we provide the app, which they can also chat anytime, you know, about the topics. So not necessarily have to be during the works, uh, during the training sessions. They can do it afterwards when they think clearly about their question. So we allow a lot of flexibilities in that. Yeah, yeah very good. In fact, e-learning, you can learn anywhere, anytime. Exactly. Yeah, we can make use of this high tech. And I love the points. Tang guess you provide the lunch for the training if you can out yes. during the lunch hour. Yes. And in fact, in our university, we also have lots of training for our staff and they offer in the during the lunch hours. But we don't have any lunch. <laughs> 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 I think we have to refer to our top management to ask them to buy us some lunch. Okay, so let's move on. So, well, let's see. Here are lots of uh, questions. All right, Ricky asked one question. Many companies have work from home policy, but the management cannot monitor the staff directly and both the staff and employer are based on trust. In this situation, how to ensure staff to keep discipline and keep the staff to have good performance? Yes, the communications are definitely important. And so, you know, as the supervisor, as the leader, they must do well communicate with their staff, not just um, leave them alone to work from home. You know, work from home is, you must work. It's not to stay at home. So how you can set your KPI, what kinds of the things, you must communicate with the staff and understand whether they have any challenging and, um, and how to, how is the, the work progress, is it? And I think this is important for the communication. Yeah, and also I think the I agree that the the supervisors they have to keep track of the uh, the work output, the quality. You know, as uh, Eliza mentioned, the work from home it doesn't mean they rest at home. Um, so so we have to keep apart from frequent communication, we also have to keep track of the output, whether they're up to good quality as well as have the same understanding as the other team members. Um, so, I mean, I, 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 it is inconvenient, but I do see it as a blockage or barrier for that, yeah. Yeah, very good points. Basically, we have to trust our people. Yes. Yeah, if we don't trust them, it's very hard to work together. Yeah, and then we can look at their, their work, their results, yeah, to evaluate whether they have paid the effort on their work. Yes. Yeah. So basically, I believe trust is the key element. Yes. Without trust, even though all or everyone are located in the office, you cannot monitor them. Exactly. Right. Okay, so let's move on other questions. All right, so next question is CM. The question is, because of the pandemic, many companies have to maintain the operation and they need to cut off workforce or deduct their salary. It may help for employees to assess, but just follow. May I ask how employer can improve the situation or uh, uh, please employees? Um, perhaps I can answer this one. Uh, we actually, um, we place some of the workforce by technology, but we do it by natural attrition. 
in the sense that some um, uh, some employees they retire or they resign from the company, we do not automatically replace the headcounts. We um, we we use the more technology. For example, in the past. Um, uh, we have some uh, bill collectors. You know, they they have to go to your actual house to 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 mark oh, how many um, uh, what's the quality of the tank gas that you use that month. You know, but now since we have the new technologies that we have the um, the people then just by using the Wi-Fi that automatically report the the units of gas. Uh, so we save a lot of uh, manual labor. So for in case some people who retire, who resign um, or move on to other jobs, we do not replace those positions. But instead, uh, we, we kind of reduce the, the manual workforce by using technology. We, do, we also we do not cut the salary as such. Both um, organizations, uh, Tangas or Hong Kong Public Activities Council, during this pandemic period of time, um, we, 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 we can't stop our business because we provide a service to the community. That's why uh, we still, you know, our staff work very hard to um, enhance our service to the community. But I understand that some of the organizations, uh, maybe the um, business that uh, they need to cut off, um, and the employee maybe need to uh, terminate them their service. But uh, from the management perspective, definitely I don't think they want to lay off the staff, but they have no choice that they need to do it. Uh, so um, um, I think if the business is, uh, if the security is getting better, I think definitely as the employer, they need to hire uh, the, uh, the, the, the employer again. But from the employee perspective, I would advise the employee never give up. During this period of time, you must do upskilling of your, your, yourself to keep up your, your, your momentum, to keep up your skills, to learn more new things, especially you always say that, hey, during this pandemic, a lot of the organizations turn to be innovative and the working habit, working style, uh, totally different. So um, as an employee, we cannot say, um, think a lot of the negative thinking. So think positive, learn more to keep up um, ourselves, to enhance our competence in different areas. So that if there is opportunity, that will easier you can get. Well, you know, very soon. Very good point. I think for some uh, medium or small size companies, in this situation, they are in their survival mode. Yes. Yeah. Because they drop their revenues and they have to keep running uh, costs very low. So in this case, I do believe if the employer, they can open to their employees to tell them the truth of the situation in the companies mm. and encourage everyone to work hard together to fight with this tough situation and just what Eliza says, keep positive mindset. Yeah, then we can overcome the problems. Yeah, that's what we can do yes. in this survival mode. Okay, so next question is, can we say we can provide more service and less with less stuff in this new normal after the pan pandemic? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, uh, from our organization, both Tankers and Hong Kong Productivity Council, as I mentioned, we serve the community. Definitely, we, we need to enhance our service level. And so, yes, I agree that, you know, during the, this new normal, a lot of the, um, uh, of, the, of the way to do the work may be uh, using automation. Just like I, um, as a, my opening, you know, my um, robot, it should be becomes our staff members already. So they help us to have some, a lot of the cleaning and you know, greeting of the staff. So that's why, as I mentioned, as an employee, we must learn more new things. I, I think, I think the, of course, the service level, we have to keep it or even the, make it uh, better 
you know, there's no doubt. Um, I guess for, for the employee's point of view, um, we, we actually provide a lot of training for them to upskill. For example, in the past, they use a manual process. But now the process has been, for, for example, digi uh, digitalized or automated. Um, so the manual part of the work probably replaced by a machine. But there are other things that if they're willing to learn new skills, they have to change to handling other things instead of the old days that the same set of manual process. So the work nature has to be modified. Um, then, you know, I would say that the, 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 any, I guess any workers today in any company, um, if they do not upskill, one day, uh, machine will replace them. Right, very good points. Basically, we have to keep learning, otherwise machine will replace us. And in fact, this question, from academic point of view, that is increase our productivity. We have always thinking how we can use less resources and produce more. Yeah, so no matter is in this pandemic uh, situations or in any normal situation, this is, keep in mind, we have to do this, reduce the resources and produce more. Okay, so let us move to the question from KY. As speaker has said, work life balance is important for employees to focus on work. But actually, most companies have their own sets in operating. It's hard to change or provide extra welfare or provide better working environment for employees, such as rest space, May I ask your advice on how companies, especially traditional companies, to reform on raising employees' work-life balance and well-being? Um, I can give some examples. Um, I think I think the work-life balance can be in many different kinds of uh, moves. Okay, one example: even the work-life balance has just flexi hours. Okay, um, in the past we did not have any flexi hours, but now we have four different slots of people they go to work. At, uh, say, say some parents, they have to take care of the, the kids, they have to, serve to, to you know, take their kids to school or whatever, whatever time slot suits them. You know, they, instead of coming to the office at 8.30, they can come to the office at 9.30. Okay, and uh, the same token applies to the lunch time. Um, you know, instead of lunch, one lunch, one hour lunch time, they somebody they may want to have you know one and a half hours or even up to two to go to the bank to to buy something for the home or something. You know, we have the flexibility of doing that, which suit their schedule. Um, so. You know, this kind of flexibility, even though in total working hours, they, we do not cut, okay? But it actually make them con more convenient to suit their schedule to do the things that they need to do instead of rushing here and there. And that's one thing. The other thing is, you know, we, we actually now thinking of going forward uh, after the pandemic time. Um, some positions probably can work in um, instead of the full-time mode. Can, we can consider more other part-time uh, mode of working, you know, no need to work five days a week, maybe three days a week, uh, not nine to five, maybe 10 to four, you know. So it hopefully can suit some people who has to look at the, their family as well as to work. Maybe the rest of the, the other hours, they actually work from home instead of physically in the office or they take shorter working hours. Um, but of course, you know, the pay have to adjust as well. So, um, you know, this we have to, we, we are actually thinking of that uh, going forward. Very yeah. good. Yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, if we still always keeping in mind that a hey, traditional, that everything cannot change. But if we need to adopt change, 
that need to have a give and take. And i am come up with my mind, the word Chinese word, din fei, like at your home, if you <laughs> wear the dress, you know, wear the clothes, uh, 10 years before. Okay, I think a lot of people, you know, a lot of, of the clothes that in more than 10 years, maybe at home. So whether you need to flow it or donate to the, the to, to, or the, you know, send it to the donation or, 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 or anything. So, so you must to have some um, uh, flexible thinking how to do it away. Just like, you know, keep saying that, hey, whether we have to arrange a flexi hour, just, um, uh, just like a DSE now, you know, already taking place. So whether you allow your staff to go to the office more on the flexi hours um, so that, you know, they can avoid the traffic to let them, you know, to, to have more convenience, transportation and so on and so forth. I think just a little thing. So um, always think of it, walk for extra miles. This extra miles need everybody to do it. Just a one step, maybe change a lot. So that's um, is um, always think something differently and can change it, can accept, but of course, you know, whether, you know, accept by the management and accept by the employee. So from the, um, from the management perspective, always think that whether, you know, this is the return on investment, right? But under the new normal, if just a half an hour flexible hours, whether acceptable, and if you pay based on the chat system, I believe that if you allow the staff uh, to lay back to the work for uh, 30 minutes or an hour because he, um, she needs to bring the kids to the school, but I think definitely they will work for extra hours. Very good, very good, thank you. The other thing I would like to add is that that's why we push on um, the technology application. Uh, you see, in, in the past, people travel a lot to different locations, you know, with the pandemic and also with the technologies uh, applications. Probably some travel, business travel have can be cut. Um, I think this is a good thing, you know, uh, unless there's some, the, you, you are the one that who like to travel every week. I hate that. I, I used to travel every week. Uh, in the past, in the past work, um, which really burning out your body. Um, with the technology applications, I think, um, you know, some, at least some business travel can be cut, which you can spend more time with your family, your kids, no need to ask you, mommy or daddy, actually, well, how come you have to, you know, go again? Um, so, so I think the, we, that's why we push the use of technology, yes. Very good, very good. That means we cannot embrace the traditional. We have an innovative mindset. We have to keep up some old stuff and we have to create some new ideas. We have to do it in very flexibility. And then we have to walk out one extra mile. Yes. Yeah, to have more new ideas. Then we can solve a lot of different problems. Very good. Now let's move to the last question. Uh, Cynthia asked this question on the contrary. How do you suggest HR can get upper management, say directors, to get on board with employee various initiatives? For this initiative to be successful, is an entire team dedicated to organizing events or campaigns going to be quite essential or can this be assigned to one college to do everything? I think one people cannot do everything. So this is not just only one staff or one team or HR to do it. It should be the entire organization from top down, from the management, from and even, you know, um, a staff that can contribute together to, to come up with some initiative events that can benefit for the organization and benefits for the staff. Yeah. Uh, what we what we have been doing in the past, um, I would say that this kind of work life balance was not really popular <laughs> among the seniors, uh, senior management. Um, they, I mean, it took us several years as a journey um, to keep 
mumbling, you know, that the importance of it. Um, we, of course, we don't jump from one to hundred. We gradually do it bit by bit every year. I think this, at least you have give, give them time to understand uh, because in their positions, they probably think that, okay, if have their more work-life balance, then the company productivity will be down, the profit will be down, the cost is going up, you know. All this. We don't blame them on this. Um, but on the other hand, if the employee morale is uh, affected, if the health is affected, people tend to resign, the turnover is higher, the negative result we also you know, end up in the company. So um, you have to do it gradually, uh, new measures every time, you know, even with this wellness leave and things. Um, you cannot say that, suggest them, oh, let's, uh, the other companies, they're doing the two additional wellness leave every year. So how about we do it, do it now? It is tough. So maybe you suggest like half a day, one day or something like that, you know, so they can gradually accept. It's, it must be, a, they, you know, with the full support of the, of the management. Otherwise, it's very tough to do. Yeah. Totally agree that you must start from very little, very little and then you come up with some um, uh, success and, you know, do a little bit survey, simple survey and, you know, the, uh, the the staff buy in, the management buy in. That will be success, and then come up with another, um, another initiative. Very good. That means we have to do it step by steps, and to influencing our top management to let them see the results, and then they will trust our effort, so they will buy in. Yeah, yes. very good. Okay, so I believe all of us have learned a lot from our speakers in this afternoon. Their strategy and solution are very practical and useful. Our speakers convince us to keep positive thinking, walk away from negative emotions. If we believe pandemic brings opportunities, we will come out with a lot of innovative solutions. I hope all of us can inspire from this webinar. Once again, I would like to thank our speakers, Eliza and Keith for their wonderful sharing and answering our questions. We would like to thank all our audience to join us in this afternoon. I also have to thank the support of aperformance.com. They have done a great job for this event. Both speakers emphasize Go Digital. In fact, we will have a second webinar in May talk about Go Digital. The theme is how is the pandemic accessing digital transformation in business? Please pay attention to our announcements of the event date and time. They will come out soon. And my last look is, if you are interested to study our MBA program, please visit our website or contact us for the details. We have both full-time and part-time programs. The duration for full-time is one year and part-time is two, is two years. Our MBA is unique that we have three specialisms they are aviation, fashion, innovation, and design. You can find the details in our websites. Application for admission remain open. However, you need to take action quick. So thank you, all of you. Thank you very much. So see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.